Hey guys, it's Kayla and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up. This month I have read eight books. I competed in my first readathon, which was I Sat Rat created and hosted by Sam over at Sam's Nonsense. I actually completed it and it was really fun. I highly recommend you guys check out our channel and to definitely participate if there's a ISAT rat held again anytime soon. This month I read audiobooks, graphic novels, ebooks, and one physical book. So starting off with my audiobooks, the first of which was When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon and I DNF'd this. It was like a 13 hour audiobook. The narration was horrible and I just found it really boring. I let the hype get to me. I knew something that is I'm not really interested in. However, it did seem cute and before that I had read a bunch of serious dark books which is the kind of books I like to read all the time. However, I was in the mood for something light and I thought When Dimple Met Rishi would have been a great fix. However, I found it extremely boring for them being at a summer camp and for it being their summer before going off to college. There's a lot that happens, there's a lot of excitement, and it just fell a little flat for me. If any of you are interested in reading the book still, I highly recommend that you do not listen to the audiobook. It seriously that was probably one of the top reasons why I did not finish this book. The next audiobook I listened to this month was The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. She's the author of Big Little Lies, if that sounds familiar, and this book was phenomenal. However, it's I can really relate to it because it's about three different families. There's kids involved, there's husbands involved, and that's kind of the time I am in my life right now. The Husband's Secret is basically about a wife finds this letter from her husband saying, do not open until my death. And she finds it when he's very alive and healthy. And it just, this mystery unfolds. It's kind of like with Big Little Lies, there's these three different families that are somehow intertwined. They, there's friendships. There's secrets. Another big theme about this book was what ifs. And I know that I could sometimes think about what ifs and this book talks about what ifs in a really great way. It gives you some what ifs. It talks about what ifs during the story with these different people's lives. It's just great. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. It was a great audiobook. It was a little bit longer, however, it went by really fast, at least for me, but I guess that's what happens when you really enjoy the book. And the last audiobook I finished this month was This Savage Song by Victoria Swab. I did a book chat about that, basically just talking about going over the end of the book. So if you want to check that out, it's in the cards. This Savage Song is basically about this dystopian part of the United States where a phenomenon has happened where that there's monsters in this particular city and nowhere else. It's about friendship, it's about has has the politics dynamic like dystopians do, it's about how humans can be monsters and monsters can be very human-like and kind and it was a great audiobook. I'm really excited to continue on with Our Dark Duet next month. Moving on to graphic novels, I read two graphic novels this month, mainly because of I Sat Rat asked you to read one graphic novel. And those were Paper Girls Volume 1 and 2 by Brian K. Vaughn. I mainly picked these up because of the art. Uh. They are beautiful. Basically, there's these four paper girls that are on their routes and it's on Halloween or it's the morning after Halloween. Some crazy stuff happens. So basically, it's just four paper girls, and then there's time travel, and there's new beings, and or there's new types of humans, and there's creatures, and it's crazy, and it's a really difficult read, as most time travel stories are. I do know that the larger bind-up of the volumes is coming out in November, I believe, so if you're interested in reading these, you may want to wait until then so that you could have everything in your hand at once. After I read volume one, I started volume two maybe a few days later and I was already kind of confused like wait what? So I reread or skimmed through volume one again right before going into volume two and that helped a lot and I really appreciated volume two a lot more 
And I don't know if that's just kind of how graphic novels go. I, I'm not the best consumer for graphic novels. I don't seem to retain a lot. I just kind of fly through them and nothing really sticks with me. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but it may be something that you have to skim through or read over more than once. Like I said, time travel, crazy new things, like a distant, like an insanely distant future. But yeah, it was pretty good. I recommend it. I read two ebooks this month. The first one was Every Heart of Do Doorway by Shannon McGuire. I was so excited to get my hands on this. This was nothing but hyped out here on booktube. Hearing the premise, it sounded like something that is right up my alley in the terms of fairy tale-esque characters retelling-ish type thing. Going in, I thought it was going to be like Once Upon a Time, the TV show. I thought we were going to get these beloved characters from other fantasy books that we have, we know and love, that they would be dumped into this book at the school together and we'd kind of like get to discover who this character is really supposed to be, a little bit about the world, and just be like a new modern twist on it. And that's not what it was. If anything, there's two characters, Jack and Jill, that I guess are supposed to represent Jack and Jill in some form or fashion, and that's about it. So going with super high expectations, I was extremely let down after the read of this book, just because I had it on an insanely high pedestal and it just didn't live up to what I just thought it was gonna be. If you don't know, Every Heart of Dore is this school where mostly children from the real world when they, they find a doorway and they go into a fantastical world other than here, and they return back, whether they were kicked out, they came back, they wanted to come back, whatever it may be. And to help them cope with living back in the real world, because time is a very skew when you're, tra when you're traveling worlds, they go to the school to help to be around others like them and to help them adjust to society or just to stay there until their doors appear to them again. Great premise. <sighs> Another thing that I didn't really like was that I kind of felt like it was a middle grade read in the writing and just I guess maybe just the theme of the book. Even though the characters were like 17 and 18, like they were higher, they were older teenagers. There was like random characters that would talk about like sex and masturbation and they're like, oh, okay. Obviously I know this is not a middle grade. I don't know if it was just the writing style or what it was. Something felt very young to me in reading this. It was just kind of a mess for me. Like it was just kind of all the place. I kind of think that's how it was supposed to be, but it wasn't my favorite. I am planning to read Down Among the Six and Bones next month. And from reviews I've seen, everyone seems to enjoy that one a whole lot more than the first one. So I'm really excited. I'm not gonna <laughs> put it on such a high pedestal this time, but I'm really looking forward to the series as it progress. I think there's only supposed to be three books, so I'm really hoping that it expands because I really would love to read about all the other worlds or maybe a new development at the Wayward School. And the other ebook I read this month was Dividing Eden by Joelle Charbonneau. This one I saw pop up on, on my library's website. I had just finished Three Dark Crowns and it said, hey, if you like Three Dark Crowns, you would like this. And I was like, okay. And this one was another one that kind of fell flat for me. Dividing Eden is about this kingdom of Eden. Basically, it comes down to the point where there, there's no direct line of succession to rule the kingdom. So there's these twin brother and sister and they basically get pinned against each other to kind of duel and battle for who can rule. It was so slow, like the first half exactly. If you read the synopsis on Goodreads, it's a little bit more detailed in that than what I'm gonna say, but the first half of the book is that description. And then you start getting into them dueling basically. And it's okay, I mean, it's not anything too exciting, but it's not boring. It starts to pick up a little bit more. And then the ending is great. Like that's where all the, the things start happening. But the first half was so slow, not because it was world building like most other fantasies. We really don't even know a lot about this world. Like it's pretty, we know pretty much the basics and it's not, very fantastical for being a fantasy world. There's just 
a tiny bit of magic. Um, I'm reading this, I got a lot of Game of Thrones vibes, like specific to Game of Thrones. And I like physically rolled my eyes. But I kept going. It was a quick read. It's a short book. So if you have nothing else to read, I recommend it. A big, big, big theme about this is secrets. Like there throughout the whole book, there's constantly whispers and there's all these secrets like, oh, the brother has a secret and oh, the sister has a secret and everyone has a secret. And it's only supposed to be a duology. So there's going to be some novellas, which there's a new novella coming out this fall, which is about the mom. And I'm really excited to read that because the mom character is, is very interesting in this book. But it's only going to be a duology, so all these secrets that we don't know have to be revealed and more in this conclusion. So I'm anticipating the second book to be extremely way better than the first. And my last book this month was a physical book, and that was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This was my last read for I Sat Rat, and Molly from Miss Molly O told me to hold off and read it at the end of the readathon because it will probably break me and put me into a reading slump. And oh my, yes it did. I wouldn't say it necessarily put me in a reading slump, but it definitely broke me. Oh, and my copies from the library, there's this sweet father-daughter picture that was the bookmark, so I used it as my bookmark. Yeah. Maybe the next person will too. So A Monster Calls is about this young boy who a tree monster appears to him one night. <laughs> and the tree monster wants to tell him three stories. And I love that aspect. I love stories within a story. I love movies within a movie. I love that storytelling element. And I think this would be a great audiobook. However, it's a quick read. I don't know if it's considered a novella or a graphic novel even. There's a few illustrated pictures in it. But like I said prior, this did break me. It touched me personally. I related to it. I thought it was a great read. It's now one of my favorites. And for me, it lived up to the hype. And those are all the books I read in September. I can't wait to see what you guys have read. And I'm ex really excited for October. There's a lot of things I'm going to be trying to be involved in and participate in. And I can't wait to see everyone's videos. And I'm just, I can't wait for October. I'm so excited. Bye. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.